mother was willing to lie to the police for him. Can I tell you why? Do I look like I care why? His girlfriend covers for him, too. He's punched you in the face. It was not in front of the kids. No, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I lied. With so much deception. Why did you tell your mother you had a restraining order against her when, in fact, you don't? Can they handle the truth? I promise you, I'm going to tell you some things today that you don't want to hear. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Chris wrote in pleading for my help with her 28-year-old son, Justin, who has been arrested more than 10 times and just last month received his third drunk driving offense. Now, Chris claims Justin is verbally and physically abusive towards his girlfriend, Hannah, and worries about the safety of their two small children. Take a look. My son, Justin, is angry. He's an alcoholic, and he's addicted to marijuana. He has very real mental illness. When he does drink, his personality changes, and he scares me. Justin and his girlfriend are so out of control that I fear for the safety of them and for my grandchildren. Justin and Hannah fight daily. Yesterday, when we were getting ready for all this stuff, everything I did was, I'm a I'm a when Justin gets angry, he gets very close in your face. He will say, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You know, like, he'll, he'll puff up. Justin has been arrested at least 12 times for drunk driving, possession of marijuana, assault on a police officer, a nurse, assault on me. I think the safest place for Justin is jail. Justin and Hannah are not healthy enough at this time to raise their children. Their children have gone without formula and diapers. Their house is messy. The kids are bathed as often as they should be. I am 100% sure that Justin is emotionally and verbally abusive to Hannah. I am 90% sure that he's physically abusive. He has put his hands on her and given her a black eye. A month ago, Justin was arrested for drunk driving. I asked Hannah if you got your kids taken away from you due to Justin's behavior and drinking, would that be enough for you to leave them? After that, they filed a restraining order against me. I don't think Justin and Hannah should be together at all. I fear that Justin could take his own life, my grandchildren's life, and he could even take Hannah's life. Okay, I'm glad you're here. Ha tell me about the children that are in the home with Justin and Hannah. There are two children in the home? There's two kids in the home. Four and one? Four and one. They're in the home in the midst of all this chaos. Yes. And you know that. Yes. And you've done what about it? Um, I'd have to say not, not enough and not much. Okay, so you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And it seems to me you're part of the problem because you're not doing anything about it. I 100% agree with that. In fact, you're financing it so it can go on. And then you say he's been arrested 10 times and had three uh, drunk driving citations. So the court system, the judges are part of the problem. They're not holding him accountable. They're turning him back out, letting him continue to drive. No, <laughs> no. They are trying to hold him accountable, but he's continued to drive without a license. I mean, he's not, since his license was taken, he's never had it returned. Did, did, he, have a, did he have a drunk driving incident with no license? Yes, absolutely. But this yet last he's one. walking around right now. Absolutely. Okay, so how are the judges not part of the problem? Because I would put his ass under the jail. A hundred. Now, Chris says she hasn't talked to Justin or the grandchildren for three weeks, so you don't know what's going on, I right? I have no idea. No idea. Okay. Now, supposedly, he filed a restraining order on you. Yes. Have you seen it? Nope. Have you called the court to verify it? Nope. He just told you? Yep. And so you're behaving in accordance 
Absolutely. you would if there was a restraining order. Absolutely. So that's all you got to do to get you out of the way is just tell you there's a restraining order on you. Um, that yeah. way you're not checking on the children. You're right. not monitoring his behavior. You're not seeing whether or not, because you're the one objective view in this to see whether or not anything's going on. Right. So just tell you, hey, there's a restraining order on you, so pack your ass out of here. Right. Okay. Would you be surprised to know there is no restraining order on you? Not surprised at all. Was pretty sure that there wasn't. But yet you behaved as though there was. Yes. Okay, I'm putting you in the column as part of the problem here. Because it seems to me that you're kind of folding yourself into this and letting it happen. What, what, it, it's not your issue. You're not the one drinking. You're not the one being abusive. You're not the one being volatile. But you're a family member that knows about it. Right. Yeah. I want somebody to help my son understand that he can white knuckle sobriety or he can make all his legal problems go away. But he has mental illness and he doesn't believe it and nobody supports my um, thought that he mental illness will stop him from ever being successful. And you said you're afraid you're going to have to call CPS. Yeah. Child Protective Services. Right. And if what's happened so far is not the criteria for calling Child Protective Services to protect the one-year-old and the four-year-old, what is the criteria? What would have to happen for you to say, okay, that's enough. They're fighting in front of the children. He's driving drunk, being drunk in the home. There's all this chaos and volatility the children are being subjected to. If that's not, what's, what's going to have to happen? You have to shoot somebody or what's going to have to happen? Where's the threshold? I would have called C Children Protective Services a long time ago. I've watched your show. I can't take the kids and so are they going to be gone forever in another abusive situation that I feel like I've already lost one grandchild to him that I don't get to see anymore. And I, I know it sounds, I don't mean it to sound selfish because I'd gladly, if they go be healthy and I never see my grandchildren again, I accept that. But I've been, and so I wrote again to the show to say, just somebody please tell me it's time or, or what do I do? My daughter has even talked about possibly maybe she could raise them and she's, 26 and has a life ahead of her. So it's like we've been scrambling behind their backs, trying to like finally know, am I gonna be able to put my head on the pillow if I call and they're gone? So you're here because you think I will bring clarity to this and will not equivocate. I pray that you bring clarity to it or you tell me, Chris, this is how you're gonna put one foot in front of the other because my health is failing seriously because of this and I still have children to raise I have another child in the home and I right. I've given everything up to try and save one yeah well you're in the right place I hope so yeah you're in the right place because we're going to be very clear about this now Chris says Justin has zero respect for authority no fear and a hair trigger temper charming we'll meet him next My problems in my relationship with Hannah are no different than any 28 and 25 year old that have a kid. So there was one or two times where it got physical. When she's calling me a psychopath or something like that, I kind of lose it. Tomorrow. You say she posts pictures online to ruin your reputation? Her story was that I stabbed my ex-husband and I went to prison for it. I didn't stab anybody. It's the battle. We had you at the beginning of the show on tape saying she's not an American citizen. She's not an American. Oh, okay. What? Of social media activists. What is that? This is my U.S. passport. That doesn't even look like you. Somebody call Homeland Security, please. Apparently I'm here forging documents. Then on Thursday, what happened? Talk tweeted, gloves off. I can't imagine threatening my child. After Lindsay left the show. Did you want to bring Chrisley Knows Best down in flames? That's Thursday. 
Justin has had mental illness since he was a toddler. Justin was diagnosed with ADHD in fourth grade and at age 19 with bipolar. Justin swings from a pendulum. He's very go, 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 and then I won't hear from him. Every couple of months, I can tell Justin is about to have an episode. Something does happen, and it's usually catastrophic. He tried to slit his wrists another time. He drove a car straight into a tree and was lucky to survive that. Chris claims that son Justin has been arrested over 10 times for assault, larceny, drunk driving. But Justin says his mother has no idea what he has done to change, and she needs to get over his past mistakes. My mom and I do not have a good relationship at all. Every time my mom and I talk, it turns into a screaming match. She is definitely controlling and overbearing. I think that she should mind her own business. My mom and I currently aren't speaking right now. He was arrested for drunk driving, and I didn't help him. She said, sometimes I feel like you just weren't my son anymore. I told my mom that I had a restraining order on her because she texted Hannah that she needed to leave me, and I knew if I threatened her with the police that she would back off. My problems in my relationship with Hannah are no different than any 28 and 25 year old that have a kid. I come in the house, the kids are screaming, everything seems like it's going crazy, and next thing you know, it's me and her are going at each other. When Hannah and I start to argue, it escalates pretty quickly. If we're in the vehicle and arguing, she starts driving like a pissed off teenager. I'm, I'm telling you to slow down, chill, it's not a big deal, and you're not listening to me. So there was one or two times where it got physical. The first time, we were both pretty drunk. I shoved her, and she swung at me, and I think I, I hit her back. That's not like a thing in our relationship. When she's calling me a psychopath or something like that, I kind of lose it. When I get angry, I'll either get really loud or get really nasty with my tone. Like, if this interview went bad, I would be like, I'm done, and just get up and walk out. And once that happened, there would be no getting me back in this room. OK, so you think you have an anger problem? Absolutely. OK, and you think you have an alcohol problem? Yes. Okay, and this is not past, this is current. You, you have that problem today. Yes, I've been working on it, you know, since I got arrested for my second DUI. I've been completely sober, and it's a decision that I've made for myself, not anyone else. Like, in the past, I've always thought that I could stay. I had to be sober for the courts, or I had to be sober for other people, and this is a decision that I made at my life, you know, at this point in my life, that I need to do this for myself so I can be there for my kids, for my girlfriend, for my family. What gives you the right to get drunk and operate a 5,000-pound vehicle on the public roads where I go, my grandchildren grow, go, all of these people go with their kids, and you're out drunk driving a 5,000-pound unguided missile. What gives you the right to do that? There, I don't have the right to do that. And but I, you do it. And I did, and it's not something I'm proud of. But I'm, what do you say to yourself at the time that gives you in your head the right to do it? At the time, I need to get home to my, my girlfriend and my family. My kids are at home, and I need to be, make sure that I'm there to take care of them, and that alcohol makes it just easier to make that situation. When I'm not sober, it's very easy when you're drinking to let those morals go that you know so well. So you realize it impairs your judgment? Absolutely. You said at the end of this tape piece here, you said, like, for example, rage, my anger. Like, if I got upset that this interview didn't go the way I wanted it to or I was upset about, I would leave it and it would be no getting me back. Yes, I'm you, very... You said that like you were proud of it. No, it's just I'm, I'm, I know myself very well and I'm a very headstrong person. Like, what, what it would yeah, I Because I promise to. you, I'm going to tell you some things today that you don't want to hear. I'm sure of it, you know, and, the, and I need it. So why did you tell your mother you had a restraining order against her when in fact you don't? Because... As she's always done in my life, she sabotaged all my relationships. I don't also need the stress of my own mother texting my girlfriend behind my back telling her to leave me when that's not something that hasn't even been on the table. I think she enables you terribly. In 2009, you took the fall for alcohol in the car. I tried to. So, I told them before they ever got to the car because they didn't want them to get arrested, tell them it's mine. 
I did. So at 18, you wanted to make sure that he was not held to account 10 years ago. You wanted to make sure he didn't have a learning experience 10 years ago. So you said, okay, tell him it's mine. Tell him it's mine. Can I tell you why? No. Okay. I, there is no why. Are okay. you kidding me? You're going to tell me why? <laughs> Look at me. Do I look like I care why you tried to keep him from being held to account for his bad behavior? No. The past 12 years, you spent sixty to $70,000 on him. Yep. Okay, because he had to have that because he wasn't being functional enough in his own life that he was falling sixty dollars or $70,000 short. Right. So you pony up the money. He's totaled multiple cars. Who bought him replacement cars? Me. You've paid bills, rent, medical, grocery, phone, all of that because he's not stepping up and earning his own way through. You mean well. I thought, yeah. But what's the outcome? What's the result? Not good, right? Oh, no. Chris says she knows Justin has been physically violent with his girlfriend because she's seen the pictures. Well, we're going to meet her when we come back because let me tell you, she's no angel in this either. We'll be right back. <laughs> When we fight, he'll go, well, get out of my house. When Justin's drunk, he is mean. He's called me fat. He dons the B word. I'm going to work. Guess that's what I... we're going to have to do if you're No, that's, no that's not an option. He punched me close fist, knocked me to the ground. I've been an enabler to Justin's behavior his entire life. I've defended, protected. I've done every wrong thing rather than correct his behavior. If my mom grounded me, you know, I'd laugh. Like, there's no way I'm not going to go out with my friends. If I came home and was like, Mom, I'm going to the movies, she would be like, well, here's $10. I'd be like, $10 isn't going to cut it. And she'd be like, OK, here's 40 Every time that Justin's gotten into trouble, we've bailed him out. We've paid lawyer fees, rent, food, cars. In the last year, I have spent probably $20,000 on Justin and Hannah. I had to put my son above everybody else because I was always in crisis mode with him. Well, Chris has been trying to get Justin's girlfriend, Hannah, to leave him. He can hit rock bottom on his own, but she says she's not going anywhere. Take a look. I'm always walking on eggshells when I'm, you know, with Justin. Anything that I say could easily trigger him. I feel like I'm micromanaged. When I'm micromanaged, I get angry. When Justin gets angry, we want to stay out of his way. When we fight, he'll go, well, get out of my house. The main issue is just his drinking. He gets completely out of control when he does get angry and he's drunk, and it's terrifying. When Justin's drunk, he is mean. He's called me fat. He's called me dumb. He's called me the B word. He would go to the bar almost every night. He wouldn't come home until 2 in the morning. When Justin and I drink, we get that liquid courage. It turns explosive pretty quickly. When I'm with them every day. You get a break. Justin is verbally and emotionally abusive towards me. When Justin punched me, he punched me close fist. It was pretty powerful. It knocked me to the ground. I got up, and then we just, I just, Continued arguing. Justin and I fight over how much he's away from the house. He coaches soccer, bowls, well, he'll choose a day to go golfing. It does make me feel abandoned. I feel like I have most of the responsibility when it comes to the kids. You okay, can't but then what we're gonna I'm gonna work 40 hours a week just to get hand my money over to okay, I guess that's what we're gonna have to do if you're no, that's no, upset. that's not an option. His mom, Chris, was adamant in getting me to leave him. She's already left me once. If she does it again, yeah, it will hurt, but it's not going to kill me. Since Justin had gotten the OWI, he has caused me more work financially and physically. Justin has court fees, his lawyer fees. Financially, we have nothing. I am mad at Justin that this has happened. I feel like our life is in just complete chaos right now. Describe the chaos, Hannah. Um, there's arguing all the time. Um, I feel chaos in my own head. You know, I'm speaking, you know, from me. I just feel like when we fight, you know, everything gets so, like, jumbled, <laughs> and I don't know how to fix it or, like, where to go from there. 
Are, are you in love with Justin? I am very now, much. And think about this for a minute, because sometimes you wind up with not Mr. Right, but Mr. Right now. It's just kind of who's there. Are you in love with her? Absolutely. So you two actually have a positive regard for each other? I, absolutely. I would absolutely never say a bad word about him, unless it's to his face. <laughs> Yeah, and you say a lot of that. I know. <laughs> so, you you actually love each other. You have positive regard for each other. Yes, so definitely. you want to stay together? Yes, one hundred percent. He's punched you in the face. Mm -hmm. Not proud of it, you know. It, it, it's something I think about every day. It's something that hurts me a lot. Uh, these are the black eyes, uh, and one is twelve, twenty three, eighteen. So this is right before Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. And then four six nineteen. Uh, you have another black eye. Those are those are the that's those pictures are from mm -hmm. the same incident. Mm -mm. No. It's different eyes. This is all news to me. You're the poster child for excuses for allowing this to continue. I don't feel like I'm a victim. The first time that Justin punched me, we were fighting. I had made a stupid, irrational, uncalled for comment, which isn't an excuse, but that made him angry. And then he flipped, he was in a different room and he came barging in and socked me. That happened in front of your children? No, it was not in front of the kids. I have it written down that it possibly was. No. Not Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I lied. My daughter was in her car seat and she was on the bed. And I, I'm sorry, I just don't want him to get in trouble. But yeah, my daughter was there. She was sitting on, um, she was sitting on, the, on her bed and strapped in in her car seat. Sorry, Dr. Phil, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to lie to him. Why did you lie? What are you afraid of? I lied because I don't want... I don't want Justin in trouble at all for anything that he has ever done to me because I know he's a good guy. He's an amazing father to both my daughter and my son, who's not his. And if we ever lost him, I don't know what I would do. You have this knack of getting people to cover for you. I mean, I, I we we haven't really talked about any of this. This has all been like, you know, this is all news to me. You know, my my wife Robin is um, really devoted much of her uh, adult life to the fight against domestic violence. Uh, this is very very important to her. So much so that she developed an entire curriculum called the Aspire Initiative. And it's taught in schools, it's used in churches, individuals can use it. She even created something called the Aspire app, which has been downloaded over a million times that has saved people's lives because it's a way to call for help instantaneously. Um, and one of the things that she does in the Aspire app is talk about what does constitute abuse. And she identifies the reasons people give to justify staying. It was my fault. I got him mad. Robin, that's probably the number one, right? It, I, I brought it on. I provoked it. Yes. Yes. They either convince themselves or the abuser convinces them of that. Yes. That's the number one reason. He apologized, promised it wouldn't happen again. It doesn't happen all the time. I know he loves me and I love him. We have a lot of great times together. I don't want to leave because of the children. I don't have a job. Nobody else wants me. I'm afraid if I leave, he will kill me. It's like listening to like a voice recording. I mean, besides the last one. Well, interestingly, we did a comparison. <gasps> of course you did. It was my fault I got him mad. You said, I said some asinine thing. He apologized, promised it wouldn't happen again. Next day, he couldn't look at me. He felt so bad, he knows it was wrong. It doesn't happen all the time. Has only happened twice. I know he loves me and I love him. I love him, I don't want to leave him. 
We have a lot of great times together. Well, really not applicable here. I don't want to leave because of the children. He's the best dad I could ever ask for. I don't have a job. You say, I'm financially dependent on him. No one else wants me. I have a horrible fear of abandonment. It's like you're the, you're the poster child for excuses for allowing this to continue. I don't feel like I'm a victim of domestic violence. I don't. I'm just going to stop talking because <laughs> I'm just going to go into those excuses. You never put your hands on a woman in anger for any reason. I don't care what. Absolutely. In Chris's past history with men, is this partially to blame for Justin's dangerous, rageful behavior? We'll talk about that next. I've been sober for six weeks. I don't need alcohol in my life. I've seen how much problems it's caused for me already. So I have to ETG twice a week, and what that is is a urine test that goes back 96 hours. So now it's a drug test twice a month. To let me come here, I had to bring a breathalyzer that I blow in four times a day. When I drink, I don't think logically. I just do. How'd it go? Good. Passing them both with flying colors. This is my in-home smart breathalyzer. It uh, immediately registers right away whether I've been drinking or not. I just blow into it. it says passed. I will not drink again. You're six weeks without having taken a drink or a drug, correct? Absolutely. And that is definite progress, and I commend you for making that commitment. No question about it. Now you have two children in the home, right? Absolutely. One year old and a four year old. Yep. One year old's between the two of you. Mm -hmm. You have a four year old from another relationship. Mm -hmm. You have a seven year old from another relationship. Yes. And you have no access to that child right now. No. Because you have failed to complete parenting classes that are required in order for you to even be a candidate for visitation with that child, correct? Yes and no. Yes, I didn't go to those uh, those parenting classes, but the re the reason why that a bit huge reason of why um, my, I haven't seen my daughter in a while is because I was sexually abused a long time ago. So that's a huge reason of why I haven't seen my my kid and why she hasn't seen her grandchild in two and a half years. She has a father that's not in the picture. And it's your job to work that out in some way. You want to see what happened in this family. I want to see them both get help. I want you two to be OK. Of course, I want my granddaughter back in my life. I want to be part of your lives. Justin, to say we have a bad relationship, you've got to be kidding me. I've sacrificed. Who's sitting next to me today? Who's right here? Do you know why nobody's right here? Because everybody's heart is just, it's crushed. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to realize this is not normal. Yes, I was abused, and how quickly did I leave? The first time it happened in front of you is the first time I left and the last time I left. Yeah. The next person went like this to you in the mouth. I pushed him out the back door, shook the door, done. Was that before I've, or after he took your head and pushed it under the dirt was, water when we watched but that? that? Was, was that me. before or after that? And because I'm very there was sad a, about your that. relationship that continued after that. Justin, so I make no excuses for every bad decision I said on tape. I've not made a right one yet. Both of you are right. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, everything that you're just describing that you've been exposed to has a profound impact on you just as much as everything you're now doing will have profound impact on your children the same way this has had a profound impact on you. Dysfunction, 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 dysfunction. And this is a place that it can begin to stop and start healing. Chris says she feels the children are caught in the middle of crossfire of Justin and Hannah's daily arguments. She says Hannah's son is now saying words like bitch and I hate you, mimicking his parents. So what do we do about that? Next. I think that the four-year-old 
has been abused by Justin. I have seen prints on his face that look like somebody squeezed his face. I have never been physical with my children. When I asked my grandson what happened, he told me that my son grabbed his face. My son and Hannah told me that the dog must have done it. The four-year-old has told me that he hates me and that I'm a The four-year-old is mimicking his parents. We do get into screaming matches in front of our baby. We have been starting to notice that her first reaction is to just scream and yet like a blood-curdling scream at the top of her lungs. I can't help but feel guilty for putting her in that environment to begin with. They just wanted to argue about what was said by a child or not said by a child. I don't want to talk about topics. The issue is, are these children living in a toxic environment? Uh, the, definitely the arguing, but I have never put my hands on my kids. I will take a lie detector <laughs> test. I will take that to my grade. And that is I have never touched my children, and that is not something that I'm going to be put into that class. Are they in a toxic environment? Yes. With us, you know, screaming at each other, it's not okay, and we need help. But those kids have never been abused. Ever. She's not saying they have been physically abused. She's saying what the children are reporting. And the children are being abused. They're just not being physically abused. And I can agree with yeah, that. Yeah. Well, all right, I'll tell you what. Joining us is Dr. Charles Sophie, who is on the Dr. Phil Advisory Board. And he is board certified in three clinical specialties, adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and family practice. He also happens to be the medical director for the Department of Child and Family Services here in Los Angeles, which is the largest agency in the country. Dr. Sophie, you've been listening to everything that we've been talking about here. What do you have to say? I'm really, really sad for your kids. I mean, you don't understand. Brains grow a certain way, and when they hear a scream, the brain changes in its growth. So imagine all the screams and all of the abuse and all of the feelings that these kids have. How do you think your daughter feels sitting strapped in a chair watching her mother being hit? That's hitting her brain. That's changing the way she's going to develop. You've already done the damage. So continue it and you're going to really be sorry. There's been a lot of research about children who grow up in violent environments. And I made a list. These are all things that we see in the lives of children that have grown up in volatile environments. Are you not a perfect example? That, that's what I was just going to say. I mean, if you look at this list right here, I mean, besides one or two of those, I'm every single one of them. I, I do want to give you concentrated, intensive help. And I've asked somebody here today, and this is Brooke, by the way. Brooke, say hello. Uh, hey, Brooke is from New Method Wellness, which is a, a substance abuse treatment center located in an oceanfront San Juan Capistrano community. It provides an array of treatment programs that are catered to each client's needs. It is a dual diagnosis treatment center that takes a very holistic therapeutic approach. Brooke, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And Justin? One of the things I really want you to hear is this is going to involve everybody. It's going to involve your mom. It's going to involve your girlfriend. We're going to put a big emphasis on that. We're going to have you fully assessed and diagnosed appropriately, possibly for the first time in your life. So I'm very, very grateful to hear at the beginning, Justin, that you said that you want to grow as a human. So let us be your fertilizer. Let's grow together. Absolutely. Thank right? you for your time. Absolutely. So this is, not about, this is not about throwing you under the bus. It's about pulling you out from under the bus. Will you take this help? Absolutely. Fair Thank enough. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Coming up, I'll talk with a couple who has two children, share a successful business, and something that makes their lives somewhat challenging. We'll hear their story next. My next guest, Tara and DJ, have been married for 14 years and have two children, ages 9 and 4. DJ works as a mental health counselor while Tara manages his successful practice. But they also share something else that can make life a bit challenging. Take a look. Having a spouse that suffers from anxiety is challenging because our anxiety feeds off of each other. It's constant stress and constant worry. I can't stop it. Work is a big source of my anxiety. It'll come out of nowhere. 
my chest starts tightening up. I feel like I'm struggling to breathe. It's just this overwhelming sense of panic. Draw picture. I also suffer with mom's anxiety. My kids are active. My son plays football. Go. I think every mom worries, but in my brain, there you go. I can come up with these outlandish situations of, well, what if this happens and I can't turn it off? Lying for me is therapeutic. There's no room for any of the anxiety from work or life or anything else. Ironically, it's the one thing that calms his anxiety and increases my anxiety. If we don't get our anxiety under control, we will miss out on life. It is time to take anxiety head on and fix it. Well, Terry and DJ are here today, as well as my good friend, Dr. Ian Tong, Chief Medical Officer for Doctor On Demand, a company my son Jay and I actually created that connects people via video to licensed medical professionals right through your phone. Now, DJ, Tell me your experience with anxiety. So, Dr. Phil, there's no specific trigger that brings my anxiety on. It's more or less situations where I'm out of control. Situations like that will bring on my anxiety. My heart will start racing. My chest will get tense. It really can be pretty pretty challenging. And Tara, you have a different set of triggers, right? I have several different triggers. Um, but what triggers my anxiety the most is th DJ's anxiety. <laughs> right. Um, for example, we'll be walking through a crowded area and we're, we're both anxious in crowds and he will lead me by the small of my back to go ahead of him. <laughs> he, he thinks he's being clever, but he's actually making me lead the way. <laughs> so, Doctor, anxiety is nothing to be ashamed of. I talk about that all the time. And acknowledging the issue is the first step to changing it. So, how common is anxiety from a medical point of view? Anxiety disorders are very common. 40 million adults in the United States suffer from anxiety. 20% of our population actually suffers from this condition. But as a highly treatable problem, the, the problem is that only one in three people actually gets treatment. And even though anxiety is very common and highly treatable, it can be really hard finding help. And that's what really inspired us to do Doctor On Demand. So talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. Doctor On Demand provides live video visits with a board certified doctor, a licensed psychologist, or psychiatrist from the comfort of your home. Our diverse team of mental health professionals provides emotional support right at your fingertips from a cell phone, laptop, or computer. So whether you're someone who prefers talk therapy or um, or you have something more complex that needs medication management, we've really got your back on either of those instances. Um, so our team is really here to provide full mental well-being with complete privacy. And, you know, Doctor On Demand is, is so easy to use. In fact, DJ, you've used the app before, right? I have used the Doctor On Demand app before. Tara and I were on vacation and I contracted pink eye. I, we dialed Doctor On Demand, and the doctor used the video chat feature to take a look at my eye. Right. She confirmed the pink eye diagnosis, she called in a prescription, and we were able to begin treatment that night. It really did save our vacation, yeah. and I, I can't believe we haven't thought about using Doctor On Demand for our anxiety. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about how you can do that. Most people don't realize that you can come to Doctor On Demand with mental health concerns, right? That's right. We started this so that patients could get access to this from their homes. So you think you'll give it a shot? Of course, I love the idea of, of having the flexibility of speaking with a healthcare professional straight from our home. I'm excited to see how Doctor On Demand can help me with my anxiety. Yeah, well that's great to hear. And Doctor On Demand is covered by many health plans and employers nationwide. So if you're dealing with anxiety, depression, or other behavioral health issues, think about Doctor On Demand. And Dr. Ian, where can people find out more information? Well, they can just go to our website at drondemand.com um, or that you can download us very easily on the app, Apple iTunes Store or Google Play Store. Um, just yeah. download our app. Good. I want to thank all of my guests today and a special thanks to Dr. Ian Tong. Before I go, I wanted to share a tweet I received from Hannah. She wrote, I don't know who likes watching Dr. Phil more, me or my six-month-old. Her eyes don't leave the TV. <laughs> so, well, I'm happy to hear it. I'll take him at all ages. We've been on 18 years, so before long, she'll have a six-month-old sitting next to her. I really love hearing from you all on social media, so keep the comments coming. 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We'll see you next time. Thank you.